Hi, and welcome to Systems of Two Equations and Two Unknowns. This is part one, we're just going to talk about the setup and the skills. Part two, we'll get into some word problems. My name is Tuesday J. Johnson, I'm a lecturer at the University of Texas El Paso and an assistant professor at Doniana Community College. Let's start with the definition. A linear equation in two unknowns is an equation that can be written in the form ax plus by equals c with a, b, and c being real numbers. The numbers a and b are called coefficients of their respective variables. And a solution of an equation consists of a pair of numbers that when substituted for x and y yield a true equation. All right, so a, sol a solution, when I put in a number for x and a number for y, we have true equality. It's the point, x comma y, the coordinates. Now, when we're looking at a system of equations, a system of equations is two or more equations considered together. Uh, there are three possible outcomes. You could have a single unique solution. This happens when the lines corresponding to the two equations, or more, are distinct and not parallel, so they intersect at a single point. This is called consistent, consistent with the idea of having a solution, independent because they do not depend on each other. There's just this point right here is our solution. This is the best case situation. It always feels nice when you get a quote answer, like here's some numbers, this is the answer. It's one of the things that I like most about math is certainty. But you could get an answer that is no solution. No solution happens when our two lines, two or more, right, system of equations, considering two or more together, uh, when they're parallel. When they're parallel lines, they'll never meet. And we say that this system is inconsistent. It's just inconsistent with having a common solution. They'll never touch. Lame math joke. It's really a shame that parallel lines are never meet because they have so much in common, i.e. their slopes. I know, if you have to explain it, it's a bad joke. It's a math joke. That's all we have. The third option, we have an infinite number of solutions. This occurs when the two equations represent the same straight line. For example, we have this one in a slope-intercept form, and here we have the same equation in standard form. Uh, we say that this equation is redundant or dependent. Uh, it is still consistent, but they graph as the same line. So any solution of the top equation is also a solution of the bottom equation. In this case, we represent the solutions by choosing one variable arbitrarily, uh, we'll generally keep x, and then we solve for y, so we can write y in terms of x. So in this particular solution, I would write all the points of the form x comma 3x minus 2 are solutions of this system. Right? It's dependent. It depends on the x you give me. I could tell you how to find y. There are three different ways that we can solve a system of equations. Uh, to solve a system of two equations and two unknowns, we can first solve each equation for y and then graph them. The point of intersection, if they have one, will be the solution to the system. However, graphing by hand does not always yield an accurate result because uh, we're not all that accurate when we're graphing, right? Our straight lines aren't necessarily even straight. Technology is the preferred graphing method, and since I do not rec uh, uh, require excuse me, technology in my class, I'm not going to go over the graphical method. Uh, Desmos, the graphs that I just showed on the previous three slides, great way to do this. Also, Wabbit EMU, you can find that in the Google Play Store. It's free if you have an uh, Apple product. This is not currently available for Apple products. Um, maybe it's coming soon, I don't know, but Desmos has an app. Desmos has uh, the website. Fantastic little app there. So there's two algebraic methods. I mentioned there were three methods for solving. One was graphical, two algebraic methods, substitution and elimination. Now substitution works for good systems. It's a, a completely a valid method. I'm just not gonna talk about it here. If you're familiar with it, use it when you see it, that's fine. Elimination is the method that works on every system. If the system has a solution, elimination works on it. It's like when you're looking at quadratic functions, sometimes they factor, but every time the quadratic formula works. And that's why we're going to focus on elimination uh, because I want it to work on every system. I don't want to have to focus only on, quote, good systems. So what is the elimination method? 
step one. We're going to multiply each equation by a non-zero number, because multiplying by a zero is cheating, so that the coefficients of x are the same value with opposite signs. So maybe I want them both to be 7, and one's positive, one's negative. Maybe I want a 4x and a negative 4x. Right, so the coefficients are the same, opposite signs. Then we're going to add the two equations to eliminate the x, which gives us an equation only in y, and this is how elimination method gets its name. We're going to eliminate x. Since we have an equation only in y, we can solve for y. Once we have an answer for y, we can substitute this value back into one of the original equations to find the corresponding x value. Now, we have to pick a, a, pick a variable when we talk about methods like this, but x, no special treatment there. You could begin by eliminating y and then solving for x first. Once you have x, you go back to find y. It just depends on what you're feeling, which one you think would be easiest, or always eliminate x, that way you never have a choice. So let's take a look at a couple of kind of lame examples. Don't worry, the second part will have better examples. We're going to find all solutions of the given system. Now, a system of equations generally has a little bracket on the left that says, hey, consider these two together. My equations are 2x plus 3y equals 5 and 3x plus 2y equals 5. Step one is to multiply one or both equations so that they have the same coefficient for x, so same number, but opposite signs. I'm looking at a 2 and a 3, and I know I could turn them both into 6. So I chose to multiply the top equation by negative 3, so it was a negative 6. And the bottom equation I'm going to multiply by a positive 2, because 2 times 3 makes a positive 6. But when I choose to make these, six, these x's the same value, opposite signs, I can't forget that I have to multiply that negative 3 times the y, and also times the constant. The 2 gets multiplied by the x, by the y, and the constant. So that gives us the two equations, negative 6x minus 9y equals a negative 15. And multiplying by positive 2 is 6x plus 4y equals 10. We're going to pretend that line is actually underneath here. Because step 2, I'm going to add the two equations to eliminate my x value. Negative 6x, positive 6x, they cancel. Fantastic. Negative 9y plus 4y is a negative 5y. Equal signs lined up. Negative 15 plus 10 is negative 5. I can divide both sides by a negative 5, finding that y equals 1. Once we know that y equals 1, I could substitute it back in either of these two originals. A question was asked in class, can I substitute it in one of the ones after I multiply? You could. Uh, I always try to go back to originals just to make sure I have the right answer, but sometimes it's easier to use the multiplied ones instead of uh, the original, so it should work out either way. I'm going to use the top equation, replace y with 1, 2x plus 3 times 1 equals 5, 3 times 1 is 3. Let's subtract 3 from both sides, 5 minus 3 gives us the 2 when we still have our 2x on the left. If 2x equals 2, x equals 1 x is 1, y is 1, we could write that in point form as 1 comma 1. And if we look up here, 2 times 1 plus 3 times 1, yeah, that's 5. And it's the same thing down here, 3 times 1 plus 2 times 1 equals 5. That's why I called it a lame example. Your x and y will not always be matching values. Another system, uh, the system consisting of equation 2x minus 3y equals 1 and 6x minus 9y equals 3. Again, we want to multiply appropriately so that the coefficient of the x values are the same, but opposite sign. I see a 2 and a 6. This is already a positive 6, so let's turn this into a negative 6. Multiply the top equation by a negative 3. And the bottom equation, if you want to multiply it, we could call it 1. Right? Multiply by 1 doesn't change it. So I'll have negative 6 plus 9, uh, excuse me, negative 6x. Don't forget that x plus 9y equals a negative 3. Multiplying by 1 leaves our equation the same, 6x minus 9y equals 3. And once again, we're going to use our imagination that that line is down below. Uh, I could move it, but not in this program. I'd have to go out, come back, and, and I'm already behind here, so I didn't do that. But notice, negative 6x plus 6x, they cancel out. Positive 9y, negative 1, 
uh, negative 9y, whew, they cancel out. I end up with nothing or zero on the left-hand side. Then I have my equal sign. Negative 3 plus 3 is also zero. So I end up with zero equals zero, which is always true. Anytime we have a system where it is always true, it tells me that these two lines are the same. Solve one of the equations for y in terms of x in order to find our general solution. So in this top equation, I subtract 2x from both sides. Divide by negative 3. Too lazy to even simplify the negatives because at this point, I'm disappointed I didn't find an actual answer that has numbers. This is an answer. This is a valid answer, but it's not a satisfying answer. The solution to the point is then for whatever x you give me, this, these are the instructions on how I find y. It's a, a dependent system, so it depends on the choice of x. Third example, the system 2x minus 3y equals 2 and 6x minus 9y equals 3. Again, we're going to multiply the top equation by negative 3, so I can make both of my x coefficients 6. The bottom one's already positive, so I'm going to multiply and make the top one negative. Negative 6x plus 9y equals negative 6, all right, multiplying by negative 3. Leave the bottom equation alone. See, I have my line in there correctly now. Negative 6x and 6x cancel out. Positive 9y and negative 9y cancel out. Negative 6 and 3 give me a negative 3. Since 0 is never equal to negative 3, they're not the same, this system has no solution. So in those three examples, we found uh, the intersection is the solution of the first one, a dependent system where they're the same lines, the solution of the second one, and these two happen to be parallel. Uh, they never touch. Zero is never equal to negative three, so there's no solution. That's it for the skills. Part two, we're going to look at more solving of systems, but with word problems. Thanks for listening.